Right. So here we are. State of Affairs, episode three, with the one and only Hilario De Leon. Milwaukee County Chair, do I have that right? That is correct. Milwaukee County Chair, and uh, tell the folks a little bit about yourself here. Uh, so I am the newly elected chairman of the Republican Party of Milwaukee County. I'm actually one of, I actually, I am the youngest chairman in the entire Midwest. So it's a great honor to be able to do that. And I will be the chairman that will be overseeing when the national convention will be coming to our uh, great city and county uh, this July. So that is going to be very exciting because we are going to be nominating our candidate uh, that we are going to send to run in the general election against uh, President Joe Biden. If he is still their nominee, we shall see. Um, but uh, I'm 23 and I've been involved in the Republican Party since 2020. And I worked as a field organizer for the Trump campaign in 2020 and as also a outreach director for the state party in 2022. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of experience despite being quite young. What is it like being in your early 20s and taking on a role such as that and, you know, dealing with, you know, obviously Milwaukee County is not an easy state to be a Republican and you could probably count on one hand how many Republicans live there and you're, and you would probably be one of them. Um, you know, what is that like, you know, being so young and taking on such a large challenge? Uh, it's definitely very, I don't want to say challenging, but it's something that I, I consider myself a pioneer and I think others would consider myself a pioneer for people in my generation, Generation Z, uh, stepping up into this role and really taking uh, the bull by the horns and, and, and taking the reins and trying to lead this great party from what people may have felt in this county was stagnation to a party that's starting to become a proper political organization and that is really kicking the door open and bringing the fight back to the Democrats. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I was at Juneteenth uh, in 2023 and uh, Governor Evers was walking around and uh, I did not hesitate to walk up to him and introduce myself as the new chairman of the county party. And he jokingly said, oh, so there are Republicans in Milwaukee. And I said, yes, there are. And there's going to be a lot more coming out. Um, so it's a it's a great honor. Uh, I, I'm learning a lot. And I hope to bring more young people into the party to help, you know, not take it over, but to help reinforce it, because that is what is needed to win uh, any future elections. We need the youth vote. So it is it. There are times where there are challenges, but um, it's rewarding to see the, um, the volunteers on the ground, how active they are and energized that they are going to be for this election cycle. Absolutely. And with Wisconsin becoming more and more important, you know, it seems like each cycle in this year, I mean, a lot of people are calling it one of the most pivotal states. I mean, we may not be worth that many electoral votes, but there are certainly a lot of eyes on this state. Um, you know, going forward here, I mean, obviously there was the huge news out of Madison today regarding the maps. Um, you know, what are you what are your thoughts about that, you know, currently as, as you know, as we learn about this? Uh, I think a lot of people have been waiting for the maps to, uh, you know, come out, what decision was going to come out. Uh, it looks like that uh, Evers is signing his own maps uh, that is being put forward. And it looked like, uh, for example, in our neck of the woods, uh, State Senator Julian Bradley, uh, who we love dearly, he was drawn out of his district. Uh, and I saw on X that he announced that he Evers cannot get rid of him so easily and that he will be seeking re-election in his district. So uh, any of our candidates, any of our elected officials that are currently drawn out of their districts, uh, we are going to do everything in our power to stand up and support them. Uh, they've been doing great work in Madison, uh, from Julian Bradley to Senator Dan Canodal to uh, State Representative Bob Donovan and State Representative Chuck Wickers. Uh, so th that is, is going to be very interesting to actually sit down and draw line for line where the new districts are going to be because I did that in 22 when the new maps came in um, and had those placed in our offices. So 
whatever the outcome is going to be, we are de we are ready for anything. And hopefully that they don't start messing with the congressional maps, because that is going to be very interesting. The state, you said it a little bit earlier that the, the uh, eyes of the world are upon us. They are watching everything that happens in this state. It's very true. I see it all the time. I saw it during the debate. There's a lot of foreign media and, and just media outlets from across the country looking at what was going on here uh, leading up to the debate and during the debate. And even now, right, uh, I just recently met with the consulate general of Japan, who is stationed in Chicago, and we invited him to our caucus. Obviously, they can't take a side because they're neutral and they're a foreign country. They're just merely humble observers. And they are like they are watching closely as to which way this election is going to go. And the fate, uh, the road to the White House runs through Wisconsin. And honestly, the control of the U.S. House of Representatives could fall to the first congressional district of the state of Wisconsin uh, if they mess with Congressman Stiles' district and even Derek Van Orden's district as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were talking with Representative Pat Snyder a little bit earlier this morning, and I believe he's getting drawn out of the 85th in these new maps by about 900 feet, something like that. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to move in order to stay in this district. You know, right now he's not a declared candidate really because of this. And, you know, it really is going to be interesting to see not just what this means for the state level, but for the national level, too. You know, I was talking to Congressman Tom Tiffany about a week or two ago uh, here at a listening session in Wausau. And he, he thinks that these maps could, you know, at least the congressional ones could go to the Supreme Court. You know, are you, are you hearing similar things from people that you're talking to? Uh, I am hearing that it could easily go to the Supreme Court. Uh, it will be interesting to see which way they decide. Uh, I know that the, the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't like to get involved in a lot of these uh, fights, and it may come down to what our state Supreme Court say. And we clearly know where uh, a certain individual who sits on the state Supreme Court, uh, as I call her, Janet, paid to switch because uh, she had over $10 million that was put into that campaign. And uh, it, ran a very nasty campaign. We know where she stands on this issue and we clearly saw where it happened and where it's led to right now. So one might view that as a kangaroo court. How can one have, you know, fair representation or uh, fair judgment if someone already has a, you know, pre-decided idea as to where they stand? Yeah. And obviously there are some very pivotal races, you know, here in the state of Wisconsin, probably none bigger than well, right now, the anticipated match between Eric Hovde and uh, Tammy Baldwin. You know, Tammy Baldwin, she's been very popular in this state. I believe she won re-election six years ago by about 10, 11 points. She won her initial seat by like eight or nine, if I remember the exact margin, right? You know, she's able to not just win urban voters, but she's been successful with rural voters. I guess mm -hmm. on the grassroots side of things, which you deal a lot with, you know, what, you know, how do exactly do you engage a candidate like that? You know, when, when you're working with somebody like, you know, Eric Hovde or maybe say David Clark gets into this race, you know, do you think that there could be a, a third person who jumps in and another Republican still? So we have a few candidates currently running right now. I want to give them the respect for, you know, at least trying to run their campaigns. It's not easy, um, especially going up against a name like Tammy Baldwin, who when I was in when I was a young, uh, a young kid in middle school and elementary school, I remember the you're damn right commercials with Tammy Baldwin and uh, it, it, like it's, she's a household name. So I give them major credit for running. It's not easy. And the U.S. Senate is a very important uh, uh, seat to have uh, uh, in this state with Senator Johnson in there. It, it just I look at seats like in Kentucky, you get Rand Paul and then Mitch McConnell, two very different people. And then like with states like Wisconsin, you get Senator Ron Johnson and Tammy Baldwin, two very different senators uh, from very different parties, uh, both representing the same state. It, it's after, maybe it's a checks and balance kind of thing. You know, one can't outweigh the other. Um, but I do not. Uh, I, I don't think Sheriff Clark is going to be jumping in the race. Um, if he does, then that would be a little, you know, kind of shocker to me because 
maybe he's waiting or maybe he's deciding to wait to see who else is going to jump in the race. I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really talked with him about that, but I haven't seen anything to where he would be interested in jumping into the uh, race. Eric Hubdi uh, will probably be announcing, I think sometime this week, uh, maybe even tomorrow or the next day. Um, but I, no matter the, the, the case or no matter who the candidate is, it depends on who's at the top of the ticket. We have a very unique opportunity with having President Trump as they, and let me just put this out there. Anyone who thinks that Tammy or, or Nikki Haley is going to be the nominee needs to go back to bed and wake up because President Trump will be the nominee. It's been cleared by uh, very clear uh, even before the voting started in the different states, um, just even at our state fair. We had a straw poll and President Trump with 16 other candidates names that were on the table. He won, I think, uh, overwhelmingly. There's like 551 people that voted just in that straw poll alone. And, and he blew everyone out of the water, uh, not by close margins either. Um, so having someone like a President Trump at the top of the ticket who has the unique ability to pull people uh, that are disaffected liberals, independents, libertarians, and Republicans, and build that coalition of common sense, uh, get out and support him, it can help up and down the ballot. So depending on who our nominee is, whether it's Eric Hovde or Stacey Klein or any other candidate that's running for uh, U.S. Senate, they might have that ability to be helped by that voter turnout. Um, so Tammy is... She may think that she's untouchable, but we are going to give her a run for her money. And I think the grassroots are fired up. Tammy Baldwin needs to go. She does absolutely nothing in the U.S. Senate uh, to where it's going to help make a big change or even help this country. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, um, kind of what you were saying between, you know, President Trump and you know candidate Nikki Haley. I mean, there were a couple of polls that have come out recently out of South Carolina, you know, her home state, that doesn't really show that it's going to be a close race. You know, there's one from the Trafalgar group that shows Trump up 33. And then there was another one from, uh, I always get this one wrong. It's a signal signal. They always, uh, they, they, they have Trump up 35, um, over her currently, uh, poly market. If you're familiar with it, it's an online market source where people can bet on races right now. I mean, Former President Trump seems to be far and away in a lot of people's opinions on at least when it comes to the betting side of things. Um, you know, 99 percent of them believe that Trump is going to be the nominee. Ninety percent thinks that he's going to win South Carolina by at least 20 points. A lot of mm -hmm. people are betting that he isn't going to win, you know, that he isn't going to lose a state in any of the primaries. And you know, right now, probably market thinks that you know, President Trump could beat a current president Biden by about double digits is where people are putting their money, you know? So even though those may not be measured polls, you know, like the way it is, it is a way that people are actually putting their hard earned money on these races. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's fascinating. I do follow the poly market um, and people are very much paying close attention. And uh, I think even looking at Nevada, when they had the two, different primaries in that state that as one calls it the fake primary and then the other one the real primary uh you had all a few different candidates like mike pence i think uh tim scott and a few other names um on there with nikki haley and then there was the option of none of these candidates uh it wasn't even close he wasn't even on the ballot president trump and he still managed that 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 none of these candidates still managed to pull ahead of candidates that have been around a long a lot longer i have been former governors or former vice presidents it's just it, it's where it's the people want to rematch they do they felt like 2020 was kind of robbed and it didn't help with covid and they they, they felt that um, they want to see a real campaign no factors of covid playing into it um and the, the grassroots very much loves president trump and his policies so that is going to be very interesting to see which way wisconsin goes the mission has to be from the republican party in milwaukee county and in with milwaukee alone is not to win milwaukee because it's just impossible it's a democrat county it's to lose by less in this county 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard a similar thing from our good friend Brandon Malley over in Dane County. It's not always about winning it. It's just lose by less. And, you know, every two years, every four years, if you win by a little less each time, you know, sometimes that can make a, you know, make a pretty big difference. Um, you know, of course, you know, nationally and things like that, you know, each poll, it does still kind of show that, you know, some people have age concerns, you know, not just about President Biden, sometimes about Trump, too, you know, with him being his his late 70s. And people mm -hmm. want to say, OK, well, maybe we should look at a third candidate. Obviously, a third candidate that's been extremely popular uh, has been Robert Kennedy Jr., um, somebody that some people believe could end up actually on the ballot come November. Do you think, you know, say this election comes down to these three candidates, say Kennedy wins 10 to 15 percent of the vote. Do you think that he takes more from President Biden or more of you know, former President Trump currently? That, that's a very excellent question. I think he's going to take votes from both candidates. Um, there are people that uh, may have really liked Trump uh, and his policies and stuff, but for whatever reason, they get hooked up on the personality aspect. I try to tell people it's policies over personality. You got to look at what we got done in four years uh, as compared to the four years that we're experiencing now, because um, it's very much is we have two two presidents, both have resumes. Look at both resumes. Were you better off now or, uh, or were you better off four years ago than you were now? Or are you better off now? Like really, I think people are going to look at, especially when it comes to their pocketbook, who's going to help them make more money, get by, succeed, uh, not deal with the, the overall inflation that's going on. Gas prices are high. Um, groceries are expensive uh crime is out of control the border is out of control I, I think people are going to take a real hard look and see who can get that taken care of and honestly the message is going to be from our standpoint is that we had a guy who was in there for four years he knows the system he knows how to get in he's going to hit the ground day one and bring us back to where we were um just like that uh with whether it's executive orders or getting bills passed by congress uh that's where we have to do our part to you know win back the house and win back the senate so that we can get these bills approved and set into law um but rfk jr is going to do you know a lot of work in terms of trying to pull votes away from those candidates i i don't expect that he thinks he's going to win maybe he does i don't know him i've never met the man but um he can definitely hurt both campaigns and i i tell republicans that you know he may sound good on some policies but at the end of the day he's very far left on many other issues uh he can be good on three things but if you look at all the other 20 30 40 other policies he's he's not a conservative he's not a republican yeah, I mean, there was rumors that were coming out in recent weeks that said that, you know, Robert Kennedy Jr. said it was true. The Trump campaign said it wasn't true, that there was talks that Trump had offered a VP nomination to Robert Kennedy Jr. And yeah, you know, some of Trump's advisors said that that wasn't true. It seems kind of up in the air about who he is going to choose for that. You know, a lot of people are expecting after the South Carolina vote is when we'll actually know. I've heard Tim Scott mm -hmm. is a very popular person. Obviously, rumors surrounding Elise Stefanik continues to be swirling around. I've even heard Christy Nome come up even a time or two. And that'll be really interesting to, too, to see, you know, based on who he chooses as VP, you know, say it's Vivek, you know, or something like that. Does he end up getting an extra boost from that VP candidate? And I think in history, I, so usually it does. I think in terms of a vice presidential pick, uh, President Trump will have to pick someone who, uh, in a sense, does not have any like major uh, ambition to overtake him or like outshine him. You got to have someone that balances him out. Mike Pence was a good way of doing that and balancing him out with the evangelicals. Uh, although towards the end, uh, after January 6th, they had their falling out. They worked very well together. He served very well as a vice president and was able to carry out the duties of what the president has asked him to do. Uh, someone like the Vake is a very uh, very new face of the party, very uh, up and coming, uh, a lot of energy and stuff like that. That would be too, they, they, they would be 
you know, two alphas basically. Um, and someone like a Vivek would probably would be given a cabinet position or some experience that he'd be able to, you know, get his feet wet with that uh, time. Um, I have heard a few names floating around there. The one name that I kept seeing and personally I'd like to see uh, would be a uh, former uh, HUD secretary and, doc uh, and Dr. Ben Carson. Uh, that has been a very popular name that has been floating around on the top of the list. I did have a dream where Trump told me so, that he was going to be picking Ben Carson. Not sure if that's going to be true or not, <laughs> but you never know. Uh, but that would be a very popular person uh, who had some experience in the cabinet, uh, has done you know work in the inner cities, and would be excellent at you know not looking to like overtake the president but serve the at the leisure of the president and carry out the duties that the president would like him to do so who knows we'll see yeah absolutely i believe kellyanne Con uh, kellyanne conway in an interview with fox news also floated the ben carson name out there she noted that he was very popular amongst a lot of his advisors and things like that too so yeah he's definitely somebody that could sneak in there and end up getting this nomination and you know be his choice and obviously i mean a very successful man in his own right you know it takes a lot to get a lifetime movie made about you he, he's yes <laughs> he's got numerous books and is probably one of the most accomplished brain surgeons in history so you know definitely somebody that brings that that counter uh you know to trump because yeah it, he does need somebody that helps balance you know the personality and things like that like you mentioned a lot of voters see that as a downside some voters vote for him strictly because of that, uh, uh, you know, right. about him. so it'll be very interesting to see how he kind of weighs that out. I know some people say, well, you know, he needs to choose a woman, you know, or, or, you know, he needs to choose somebody like this. Really. He is probably just looking at saying who can help me down ballot the most, who can help Republicans up and down the ballot. And yep. I mean, that's certainly going to be a very interesting question as months go ahead. You know, one thing that I thought was very interesting was that Fox News did a recent uh, general election poll and they did a lot of the swing states. And, you know, in their poll, they found Trump, Carol, you know, Trump leads North Carolina by five points, um, Michigan by two, uh, Georgia by eight. And in Wisconsin, he's tied at 47. Now, with Robert Kennedy Jr. on the ballot, um, he leads Wisconsin by three. Um, the other margins don't necessarily change as much. Georgia stays the same with Kennedy. Uh, Trump's win in Vic, uh, Michigan goes up to five with Kennedy on the ballot, and it goes up a point, actually, excuse me, four points in North Carolina with him on the ballot. You know, that clearly does show that Wisconsin is maybe one of those states that is looking at like, uh, you know, I, I'm not big on both candidates, but if Robert Kennedy Jr. is in here, I'm going to put my vote for him. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that looks like it takes away from Biden a little bit. I believe in Marquette's poll as well, they had uh, Nikki Haley defeating Biden here in Wisconsin by 15 points. I'm not sure, you know, how how accurate that is. When we were talking to uh, Dr. Ed Miller from UW Stevens Point, um, he felt like that there was maybe a, some sort of error in that poll with that wide of, large of a lead. But, you know, what do you make of the fact that in all these other swing states, Trump has such a seems to be pulling away, but then struggling to gain broad support here in the state so far in Wisconsin. I think it's because it's still early. Um, people have short memories. They they really do. They, they forget how good things were going with, you know, from gas prices to no new wars or to, uh, you know, prices and grocery stores. Everything was so low. But I, I think people are starting to get, you know, sick and tired i apologize that someone's calling our office um i, I think that people are, are starting to kind of like because the news the, the media never learns their lesson in terms of uh if, if they just stop talking about trump i'm sure that people would stop paying attention but they keep talking about him and it's just everyday thing and they're getting tired of it. They're seeing the persecution that's going on. So in the primary, you're going to see a large number of people that are just tired of what's going on. And it's just a big middle finger to the system. And they feel that a vote for Trump would do that. And I think that in a lot of these swing states, when you become it come into the general election, people then go back to like, you know, do I 
some people become comfortable with Biden. They may not like him, but now they're just comfortable with him. And, and I think that's what we're seeing in some of these states. Um, but in terms of a third party candidate, someone new, someone fresh, who also has, you know, that name Kennedy, that was a very popular president. Uh, and, and people remember those times. I, I think that it, it's very interesting to see which way that is going to go in I sound like I'm rambling. Sorry, the phone is just. No. Uh, but it, it, I, I, at the end of the day, I think we're not going to really know until you know we get closer to November which way this is going to really go. Um, I don't even know if the Democrats are going to you know push for their primary of Joe Biden. Are they going to have Joe be on the ticket? It seems like insiders are saying that they don't want Joe on the ticket, and they but they don't know how to get rid of Kamala uh they, they're trying to figure that out but i think that they're going to be stuck with joe and and i think the person that is the the most unhappy with this decision is probably joe's wife so i think they thought that he's only going to do one term and that was it and but they messed up with kamala harris yeah i mean there was a report out of cnn this morning um you can find it on wsau.com currently that talks about how a lot of democrat officials have reached out and they've had dinner with Kamala Harris and they've had conversations, meetings on Air Force Two, et cetera, talking about 2024 reelection strategy. And, uh, you know, some of them, you know, uh, Debbie Daniel in Michigan has been very critical of their strategy. You know, there is a, a large push, not even from rural Americans or from urban Americans, but from Americans that are upset about things going on overseas, you know, for example, in Gaza and Israel where there are a lot of you know Muslim Americans who are just saying that they're not going to vote at all. And obviously in states like Michigan, a major swing state, that can swing a lot of different ways. If a lot of them just say, you know what, I'm just not going to show up. I mean, that has a big impact. Um, you know, they were reporting, uh, CNN was that uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker, you know, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, the governor in, of Maryland, um, you know, they had a meeting and they were talking about different ways to do this. And I mean, it's it, it seems that there's worry, uh, at least at state levels, that if Biden struggles nationally, this could hurt them down ballot. And I, I think it's going to happen even here, too. As a matter of fact, today I will be having a uh, sit down meeting with members, uh, 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 community leaders of the Muslim community in Franklin. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing what they are interested in talking about, what are their thoughts, what are their concerns, what can the party do to address whatever concerns that they may have, or are they looking to you know make a switch and you know what place will they have within our party? Everyone is welcome. This is the the, the GOP, the grand uh, old party, the the great opportunity party. Uh, everyone has an opportunity to be involved and, and stand up uh, for the American values that this republic was founded on. Um, so I'm really looking forward to having those conversations, making those inroads, because that is one of the big things that I ran on when I was elected as chair. There were six people that ran for this race. Um, it was not an easy campaign. And there was three hours or we went three hours over our caucus time and three rounds of voting, but I managed to pull through. And that emphasis of community outreach, uh, besides going after the main goal is the low propensity voters of Republicans that aren't turning out and voting. We have a turnout problem in the state. It happened in 2022. Uh, the abortion factor played a factor into that um, issue. And we need to our people. We need to encourage them to get out and vote. Now more than ever, if you turn out and vote, uh, there. I guarantee if you don't vote, you are guaranteeing the other side the victory. But if you do turn out and vote, we have a strong chance of preventing them from winning and allowing us to get carried over the finish line and, and taking back the White House, taking back the House, taking back the, the Senate, taking back our Supreme Court after the 2024 election. Um, this is just things that we have to encourage people to do. Those who sit on uh, the, the picket fence get impaled by it. Uh, Get involved with your local county party. Sit down. See what you can do to help. Uh, reach out to people that you may have never thought of reaching out to, and, and just talk with them. Ask them, you know, what do you think about what's going on? So I guarantee most people are going to say things suck. Yeah, and obviously, you know, in Milwaukee County, 
one of those big hurdles, you know, is minority voters. It's, you know, such a key demographic, you know, for so many county parties around the country, you know, especially in urban areas like yourself. You know, when you have these meetings like you do, you know, today, you know, what are you hearing from these voters? You know, what are some of these issues that they're bringing up and saying, hey, you know, I would love to vote for your candidates, but here's where I'm hung up or hit. Here's where I agree with you. I think that some of the issues that people get hung up on, like like State Fair is probably the best example of the conversations I've had with people. I've gone to Juneteenth. I've gone to Garfield Days. I've gone to Cinco de Mayo events. I know the El Conquistador newspaper has put on plenty of community events that I've gone and had a table at. And anytime that I'm talking to people in the community, I always ask them, you know, hey, what do you think about what's going on in the city? What do you think about what's going on in the state, the country, just in general? And that's where that whole idea of people say, yeah, things are bad. And then I break it down. You know, yeah, it seems like crime is out of control. Inflation's out of control. Look at what's going on at the border. Drugs are pouring across our border. There's more people that are crossing our border than ever in our nation's history and we don't know who they are and the government's is catching them and releasing them into the community a lot of these people are criminals that are you know from a sane asylums from all around the world because other countries they don't want to deal with these problems so they send them our way or we have people that are smuggling drugs into the country that are poisoning our youth our neighborhoods or our schools uh, we have people that are human trafficking is a horrible problem um People are just living paycheck to paycheck or, you know, the Biden administration is talking about the amount of jobs that they're creating and the amount of Americans that are working in different jobs. They don't put the factor on that a lot of times that those are more than one person or it's one person working more than one job just to get by. I know people at my work uh, or in my life that are working more than one job just to try and put food on the table and pay their bills. Energy costs are expensive because we are no longer energy independent. And trying to explain that to people, it, it's not an easy thing because there are people who are the not in my backyard mentality folks. If they do not see it happening in their backyard, they do not think it's happening. But then you have the people that are it's trapped in areas where it is happening and they feel like that their voice is forgotten or not listened to. And so they don't feel like, what is the point of voting? Why should I even vote? The, 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 nothing's going to change. I have family members that think like that. I'm like, you you have to turn out and vote. Or you have to talk to anyone and everyone that you feel will at least listen to you and try and make some change. We can make some changes right now because we still have control in the state of the legislator. Uh, now is the best time to start talking with us about trying to get bills done. Now, whether the governor will sign them or not is a whole nother question. Um and with the whole redistricting thing, that's going to, you know, probably throw a huge blow into that majority. Um, but that's why I keep going out there and trying to talk to people, connect with them, hear what their thoughts are. Uh, but very much so economically, people are, are, are hurting and that's their concerns. Yeah, I, I just on a bipartisan level, I mean, if you just talk to anyone, whether it's a brother you know, a, a parent, an aunt, a friend, a, a co-worker, anything like that, a lot of people will tell you, you know, that their groceries cost more, or gas costs more, any of these factors. I mean, historically, people have always voted on their wallets. And if that's not good, generally the people in charge, you know, they, they feel that at the poll. And it'll be very interesting to see how much that is felt come this fall or you know, because as we see right now, things are likely only going to get more expensive. You know, the Fed has not said anything about very much rate uh, cuts or anything. Maybe this summer they said they could see a rate cut. But I mean, you know, if you ask most voters like, oh, well, you know, they're going to cut the rates. What do you think they're going to cut the rates by? They say maybe a point if that, you know, when you're paying a 7% interest rate for a home right now, a lot of people are being like, whether it's 6 or, you know, 6% or 7%, doesn't really make a difference. It's still, you know, four or five percent more than most people were paying on average three, four years ago. So, I mean, that is certainly going to be an issue going forward. And I think, like you were mentioning, it's going to be felt come November. You know, for anybody that's looking to get involved or say they listen to this and say, man, you know, this state is so pivotal. It's so huge. How can they, how, you know, how can they get involved? They can go to our website uh, at MKE gop.com i'll say that one more time mke 
GOP.com. They can sign up that way or reach out to us. Give us a phone call. Call our office. You can find uh, our, our phone number on our website. Uh, go to our social media pages. Follow our social media pages. See when we have upcoming events or trainings. I'm trying to move this party away from just doing simple pints of politics, which are social events, to actually building the volunteer army that is needed to get out there and connect with the low propensity voters. I want people, I want moms knocking on moms' doors. I want Catholics reaching out to Catholics. I want everyone reaching out to anyone and everyone that we can to get out and vote in this November. But um, follow us on social media. Tell your friends, tell your family, become a member. You get voting rights uh, when we have caucuses or when we have state convention. Milwaukee's allowed to have up to 536 delegates at the state convention. We never hit that number. So uh, it'd be nice if we had, you know, more than 100 people show up at, uh, at the state convention, especially in terms if you are looking to endorse a Senate candidate. This year's state convention will be in Appleton in May. Uh, you can go onto the RPW website or wisgop.org. You can figure out, find all the information about state convention. We are not leaving that room until we come out with an endorsed candidate for our state for U.S. Senate. So if you are passionate about, and feel that you want to make a difference as to who should be our nominee or our endorsed candidate, for the state or for U.S. Senate, join the party, join any local county party, anyone who's listening, join your local county party, get involved, figure out how you can be a delegate at the state convention and go and vote because you can make a huge difference and huge impact on how we win this state back. So that is how you get involved with us. And it's the, going to be the grassroots that is going to save this state and save this republic. And I hope that we do it right through Milwaukee. Very well said. You know, thank you so much for coming on, Hilario, and, you know, going over all these different issues. Hopefully we help some things make more sense for more voters. Obviously, with everything going on, you know, there's not enough time in the day to discuss most things. But, you know, I do thank you for coming on and going over some of the things that we were able to. I appreciate you having me, Thomas, and I look forward to, you know, if any updates you need from us, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to provide everyone with what we're doing here on the ground. So thank you so much. Fantastic. You know, thank you again, Hilario, for coming on. Hopefully we can do this again as we get closer to the election. You heard it here first, everybody. Hilario J. Leone, the youngest chair, county chair in the Midwest, certainly one of those up and coming stars, going to be a guy to watch out for in the future, I'm sure. Thanks for coming on, Hilario. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening to episode three of State of Affairs with Milwaukee County Chair Hilario J. Leone. Have a good one. Thanks for coming on.